So when I was young, my parents told me to work hard, to get a university degree, so one day I will be an independent woman with a strong career. This is the same advice as Jasmine got from her parents. Her parents immigrated to Germany, just like my parents did one day, with the hope of creating a better future for us, their children. Omar always loved machines, since he was a little boy. And his biggest dream was always to work with machines. So once he was offered by an international company a job within the factory facilities, he was grateful, because it meant for him a stable income for his family, and at the same time, he would have the opportunity to work in a technical environment. Khalid followed the steps of his father. He was a banker already, and Khalid also became an investment banker. After several years, he moved into trading, a job which is associated with power, wealth, and the excitement to work in a dynamic work environment. Last but not least, let me introduce you to Yusuf. Yusuf is a pure sales talent. He could sell basically everything. He could work here in Marrakech and Gemma, if not. He's a talent. He started off with used cars. He was very successful. And after a certain time, he, walk, he worked his way up to become a sales representative at a multinational company, being proud of being able to work in a modern work environment with a great team, like-minded people, so, you might wonder, what do all of these people have in common? Do they remind you on someone you know? Maybe a family member? These are very different people, but they share the same future. There's one commonality, which is the fact that their labor how it is defined today, will be replaced by artificial intelligence. It is already happening now. So, factory workers, taxi drivers, bankers, lawyers, investment bankers, people from very different class, all have this one piece in common. So please, allow me to share with you a little bit of background about this technology. Artificial intelligence, AI, has one major goal. The goal is to create systems that can work intelligently and yet independently. This is the goal of AI. It is a part of computer science. It actually has many, many subcategories. A lot of buzzwords, a lot of people heard and got really tired of by now. And I would like to shed some light here, because there is a very easy way to think about artificial intelligence. It is actually, if you're related to humans, think about it in the context of a human. We humans speak and listen. This is the area of speak, speech recognition. We humans see with our eyes. This is the area of machine vision. We humans can move around fluently in any given environment. This is the area of robotics. We humans have the ability to recognize patterns of similar objects. Let's say these three chairs, we see them, we realize it's three chairs. Machines can do something similar. But there is one big difference. Machines are a lot better in doing this, because machines can use data. Machines can use massive amounts of data. They can use even different dimensions of data, amounts that we as humans definitely cannot even imagine. And they are a lot better than us in doing this, which is the area of machine learning. 
So one more last piece on this one. If you now think about the human brain, we all have one, smaller, bigger, it depends. The human brain consists, it's a network of neurons, basically. And we use this network to learn. If you replicate these capabilities now to a machine, you allow a machine to process and to make decisions just like a human being. And there are many, many areas of this already today. We're talking about neural networks. That's the name of this technology. So far, how does this affect us exactly? How does it really work? Let me give you some very basic examples here. Foxconn, the provider of the iPhones, the company that builds actually the iPhones for Apple, already announced that they will replace 60,000 of their factory workers with robots, robotic technology as I explained it. Now think about this. What does it actually mean? It means that there was an economic decision taken that made it very clear that it, there is more efficiency in using a robot that never sleeps, has never vacation, is never sick, and can do simple tasks like moving goods from A to B. And that this is cheaper for a large company like Foxconn than paying $5 a day to a factory worker in China. Another example, a very famous law firm, Clifford Chance, announced in partnership with an AI company, Kyra Systems. What their algorithm does is basically that it analyzes contracts. It looks through contacts, takes out the, test, the text of the contract, and performs due diligence work. This algorithm do it faster in a higher quality than any possible lawyer could do. And that is the reason why AI is today so powerful. Let me add one small note here. Today, we see a shift. We sh see a shift where computation power is rising. There is more powers in the computer. And at the same time, the cost for storage is decreasing. This is why right now, AI is so powerful. Why we all talk about the rise of AI in this very specific moment. And this will not change. And actually, this is something that generates a lot of fears for many people. And if you think about it, why do we feel this way? It's very simple. For so many years, we grew up to believe that we are the superior race. Nothing, no one better than us on this planet. For so many years, we were the best algorithm existing not the case anymore. And this is threatening us. Because obviously, if you're in a situation like this, if you have to deal with such a fear, you will naturally think that everything which is there to surpass you, your race, that this must be inherently evil. And I'm here today to tell you that this is what Hollywood is portraying. This is not reality, okay? Reality check here, tick box. This is not what's happening right now. This is what the movies are showing us. Because actually, if that would be the case, we would already live like this, because AI already did surpass us in so many arenas. So I believe that we have to face this fear. I believe that the answer here lies within accepting this fear and with trying to cope with this identity crisis which we might have to undergo. Maybe this crisis is powerful enough for us to reinvent who we are as human beings. What is human today? So right now, I would like to ask you for your trust. Please, just for a few seconds, I would like to ask you to please close your eyes right now. All of you, please, just your trust. Close your eyes and try to feel. No matter what you feel right now, 
just feel. Please hear me when I tell you that this is what makes us humans. Our ability to feel pain, love, being hurt, our capacity to empathize with other people, to be creative, to be critical thinkers, this is what is human. This will remain. This will be for us our skills. There is no such thing as artificial consciousness. What I just referred to is the concept of true consciousness. We humans, we are truly conscious. And there is actually nothing to fear for us. Because there will be a way where we can co-work and coexist with these systems. AI has a place. It is much better than we are in decision making. That is a fact. But together, when we could combine the strength of these intelligent machines with the competences that make us really human, we could actually really create something fantastic out here. And I tell you, it is not technology that is evil. It is not technology being evil. It is us humans that decide how we use technology. And I would like to give you a nice example, quoting a great author, Noah Harari, who had said, well, look at the Industrial Revolution. In the Industrial Revolution, we had some key technologies, like electricity, like the capabilities of manufacturing. And the same technologies were used to build different societies, from communism to fascist societies to democracies. So right now, it's for us to choose what kind of society we want to create. At the end of the day, I believe that the differences in these societies is ethical. It is not technology. Therefore, we have to now create an ethical framework that will help us guide our way through the change. We have to be now mindful and making sure that we do not feed biased data into these systems, to make sure that this data does not discriminate on any minority on this planet, which is already happening right now. And we have to think about how we want to contribute to this new society that we are building. I believe that we all have important pieces inside of us. I believe if we stay open, and think about how we want to shape this new society, that we will experience what I call an AI-driven human renaissance. Shukran.